Okay. Thank you so much, Monique. Please continue. Thank you. Okay. So we started our journey with Adrian, and then Adrian introduced us to Johan, and um, we had we were looking at. What, uh, looking at different um, systems that were av available because we had plotted everything into a spreadsheet that made it very complicated and it really became an onerous exercise keeping all of this information updated and making sure we were aligned with our assets in the financial system assets in the planned maintenance system and then this reserve study so uh, Hence, we said, look, we're at a stage now where we can look at automating. We had certain criteria, and our discussion started with Adrian and Johan. And we got all our assets into um, the system that um, was part of Glovent at that stage. And I think we've had a lot of learnings between ourselves and um, Adrian and his team. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Penny. I'll, I'll come back to you uh, now because there's some more questions that we want to ask you and also some, you know, what we uh, position today as some myths. Adrian, uh, I'm going to give you a bit of opportunity. Uh, you also have been through the journey, sort of th those kind of things that, that you've learned and the myths that we can help the, the participants on the, on the webinar today. I, thanks, Yuan. Yes, so along as a piece of string. So it's it's been very interesting. As as was explained, yeah, I've been involved with it for a while with my Glowman hat on. Um, but we really started actively um and 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 the with Glowman we partnered with Jeremy, that you most of you would know. Um he for he, he formed a company called Core, Center of Reserve Excellent, and he developed a system called Irmos, Integrated Reserve Management Operating System. Um, for various reasons, in Globin, we didn't man manage to get to do everything we wanted to do there. And about, about end of last year, just for record purposes, Globin decided to to exit the relationship with Core. I'm not involved with Globin at all anymore. So, so currently, the core system is is back with Jeremy. But what we found when I was still at Globin, and that's why I approached Yuan Kruger, Yuan in this instance, is that um, the, the core system, the Jeremy system, has been out a number of states for quite a long time, a number of years. And and to be blunt and honest, it wasn't really successful. And, and we and Yuan and I chatted to me and we looked at the scenarios. And we believed one of the main reasons was that um, the, the reserve study solution was, uh, that's offered is not just a it, it's not just a system. It's a very important professional service element to it, in our opinion. So um, and and we believe that's what went wrong with a lot of um, with a lot of clients previously so and we compare it to audit maybe getting your auditors to come run an audit at your estate um they use caseware or whatever tools they use but at the end of the day the auditors need to come to the estate and do the offer the professional service so long story short we are of the opinion that there's a professional services element and in the the system element there's the element that crunches the numbers and give you all the results um and that is what that's what we've involved to so when penny said we engaged us and and you on that's what we involved with, with Penny so we, uh, and Schoenberg. So we offer the professional services. There's various tools out there. Um, and then we can talk about that at the end of the day. So that, that's maybe one of the big things we've learned. And then we started a journey with Schoenberg. I think it's something that's been coming very long. We've been excited to do it. We all learned together. It was wonderful to work with, with Penny and the team. And, and, and we learned a lot through the process as well. So, so Jan, I can go on forever. I think I should pause here. And then... <laughs> Then you can start yeah. questions. Yeah. I, I, I've got a few, uh, let's say a few myths, a few things that I've picked up either in class or presentations that I can share with the group. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and and, and uh, just to, to, to mention that we um, shortlisted with two estates that we should know on Friday and that we're currently busy with another reserve study for, for a state called Cornwall U in Pretoria. And it should be completed to that, or it should be complete by the end of, of, of June. So f first of all, I, I think this is the, well, I, not in specific order, there's, there's no law in South Africa that uh, prescribes how you should do a reserve study for HOAs. So I often hear, no, but it's um, according to the law or the Companies Act, there should be a reserve study. There isn't, okay? In America, uh, there's about nine or 10 states of the 52 that it's part of the state statutes that they have to do a reserve study. 
So they also go through this process of is it required or not. Unfortunately, that very serious incident in Florida last year where building collapsed has put it on the front pages again. And uh, CAI is working very closely uh, with the legislators in each state to, to get it introduced. Added to that is um, <clears throat> I, I also often get the question about uh, how many times levies there should be in our reserve fund. Um, you know, and I've, I've seen five times, ten, start, 10 times or whatever it is. Again, HOAs, there is no such guideline because it differs from estate to estate. Some estates do maintain their own infrastructure, other estates don't. So their uh, sort of reserve fund could differ. What we have found is, is that when you do a comprehensive reserve study and there's a reserve plan with a, with a funding behind it, it will give you when and how and how much funds you require per, uh, per month or per annum. Sorry, not per month, per annum or per year. So it's sometimes you need 10 times. Sometimes you only need um, three times, depending on what project you scheduled uh, for that specific year. The times levies in your in a and it's not your reserve your reserve study fund that you want to have as a in the bank depends probably on your turnover and your risk in terms of service providers that if you if something goes wrong you have to pay them do you have uh, enough money uh, just add it to that reserve fund remember not everything or all the money that you've got in the piggy bank or in your in your uh, reserve account <clears throat> is earmarked for the reserve fund. Because some of that money might be earmarked for projects or funding that you received outside your levies that's earmarked for a specific upgrade onto the estate. So often people would say, well, we've got 9 million rand in the bank, is it enough? We must determine how much of that 9 million is, is earmarked for a reserve fund over a period of time. That's two comments. I'll get, I'll get to a few others now. Uh, Penny, do you want to share one or two more of your learnings, uh, so and then I'm going to give just, Adrian a chance as well. Thanks, Penny. So if I can just come into to what you're saying is, I mean, money in the bank. You know, if you haven't done a reserve study and understand the full value, value of the replacement of those assets, that money becomes something that members see as an opportunity to use um, for a new capital item and, you know, it's at an AGM and people will vote in that money. Having got, and, and we went through this as a learning, you know, people saying, wow, you've got so much money in the bank, you know, surely we can do this and we can do that. When you've gone through a reserve uh, study, you actually can demonstrate that, no, this money, a portion of this money is not available for use for anything else but to replace your assets and I use as an example now our whole cameras on the periphery and our electric fence they are uh, uh, going on 15 years between 10 and 15 years we had to replace them I mean we re are replacing everything out of the reserve fund as it was plotted without raising any special levy and we're talking, you know, a good few million. Now people are starting to see the value of that reserve fund. You know, it's not affecting them. They're getting a new asset that is, you know, up to date. And, you know, we were having, we were spending money on camera uh, replacements and doing little jobs, you know, to maintain the electric fence and the cameras. And we're starting to cost money. Now we've replaced it. Hence, I say it's very important to be able to uh, identify that portion of money in your reserve fund linked to your, for what it's meant to be. Yes. I, before and, I give Adrian a chance there, Penny, and I want to make a comment on that. Um, first of all, we call it a reserve study. It's, yeah. it's not a capital reserve fund study, capital replacement, capital reserve fund, all these fa fancy words out there. So the purpose is really, and just to confirm what you've said, the capital, the, the purpose of the reserve study is to determine how much money you require in your reserve fund to replace assets that you already own. 
Yes. Okay. So one of the myths that I want to bust today is uh, capital projects, fut future capital projects. Best practices in America says does not form part of your reserve study. 100%. So we, we, we offer it as a added to say we can do the sum for you when it comes to the funding if you've got a capital project because the clients wants to know we want to build a clubhouse do we have enough money but the biggest myth for me is to say well we we we, we do a reserve study to you know and a reserve funding for capital projects and just to confirm what you said it's what you've already got okay yeah so it, it, I'll, I'll say yeah no, it's what you've got. And the other thing is, um, and, you know, what portion of your levy do you, uh, so we, what we've done is we've taken our levy and we have split it between operational and um, reserve fund requirements. So we, we uh, know how much our replacement value is and where we should be in any point in time and what portion of the levy we should be paying in to the reserve fund capital or, or the reserve fund account, money account. Yeah. So, and that is informed from the reserve study. Yes, Br brilliant. I wanna add on, on, on to that, sorry, yeah. Sorry, so if people come and they say, let's use Clubhouse as an example, they want to build a clubhouse, okay, so we know the capital outlay for a, a clubhouse is X, we've got to raise those funds, but then you can have a look at what impact that's going to have on your um, uh, asset, on your um, reserve study that links into your uh, money chain and you can then present those um you know that that cost of ownership uh, br brilliant i'm going to ask adrian adrian i'm going to put you a little bit on the spot about components so uh because that's that's a forms a big part talk, talk to us or share or bust a few myths about the components and if you can add in those four tests four part test um to, to, to um yeah off you go sorry thanks Johan. i just i just found an interesting fact here from one of the webinars we um just to add quickly to what benny said and i just want to read it here if i can find it again but um we i think the ultimate goal is um and, and we can go into a lot of details now as as, as management of, of of states or communities residential communities the aim is to maintain the assets over a long period of time and um and then there's various ways that one need to then budget for this to go forward. And then, um, and then exactly at the end of the day, you've got your, you end up with your operational levies and then also with your reserve contribution. I'll talk about now this, sorry, Juan, I'm not talking what you asked me to, but there's also other ways of funding it. But interesting, just enough, a lot of people work on a 10% or for whatever percentage of operational budget. And then maybe I'm shooting us in the foot, but there was, the, um, like I said, we follow the reserve studies in America quite closely. In 2021, they studied more than 2,000 reserves for condo associations. And in 99.85% um, of them needed more than 10% of budget going to reserve. So I I think there's sometimes a, um, a misperception of, and if I can link to the components, we've been doing quite a bit of work with um, states. So, the biggest challenge maybe is to accurate, accurately or as accurate as possible list the components. Now, if we talk components, you'll, you'll see we don't talk about the cap capital items. I think, and, and we're jumping around a little bit, but the first reference is many times the financial statements. Um, and accountants are fantastic, but it's a slight, it's quite a different purpose that the list is compiled here. And it's a great reference point, but it's, it's two different lists. So, so accountants will look at, for example, capital items, and, and there's maybe things that's not that's not that's not owned by the HR, it's maybe owned by the developer, which you won't find on the as an example on the um, financial statements. But it needs to be in reserve plan because maybe it needs to maintain. Also, um, financial statements look at um, the, the purchase value and then they depreciate it. The reserve plan you look at the future replacement value. So, so I think to compile an accurate component list of what is the current components on the estate. It is very difficult. And the way we approach is to break this state down into zones. And so we worked with states now and, and we've got a list and it's, it's amazing what's been forgotten. Once you take a map of the state, you break it up in zones and say, but what's there? 
oh, it's a church, really, okay. And then you start listing the components. And maybe another challenge is that you won't get it right the first time. I, it, it, they say that the study is a plan and a science. Ach, it's art and a science. So there's always art. You still wrong. It needs to be a very scientific and calculated test. And at least by getting a very solid base of the components, that can be maintained and build upon and become stronger and stronger. So, so I, yeah. So I talked about uh, yes, uh, Adrian. I've got a I've got a good good example that I'd like to share with it, with that uh, audience. So the one estate that we're involved with. They, they don't have, like most of us, enough money in the bank to upgrade, not upgrade, to install new cameras. So they don't have a cameras at all. So they've struggled for the last probably five to 10 years to get that approved. So finally, they decided they're going to go on a finance model. So they're going to finance those cameras over five years, uh, you know, through a, a financial institution. And they can... Um, put that finance cost in the levy. So it, they managed to, to secure it into the levy. So there's one, no special levy, no impact on the, on the uh, reserves. But in five to seven years time, that asset is gonna be theirs and they'll have to replace it. So it's nowhere on an asset register because it's a, it's a finance thing. And to, to do the sum and to assist them, that there is enough money in five years' time that they can, or five or seven years' time, to replace those cameras so they've always got new. Okay, just on, on the components, as a, which for me is quite a good example uh, to say, you know, how do we, how do we get all those things um, uh, together? And what we found, uh, sorry, Arjun, just to also to reiterate this, HOAs get given lots of assets by the developer for one rank the day at, at, um, at turnover, at the handover process. And it does not appear on an asset register. You might find it under the insurance, which is a great reference, but we based this, the sunscreen and techies and that walk and, and list those, those kind of things. Okay. Um, Penny, I don't know if you've got anything that you want to add on the components. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, or items uh, on that, because I, I want to talk a little bit about the funding uh, and how you guys have put it into your um, into your levy. Okay, so I, don't, I, I think we went through a very comprehensive exercise. We started off by having everything in a planned maintenance system. That we then put into a spreadsheet um, to get the values as, as at replacement value. And so I think we went through quite a comprehensive exercise. And even though we thought we had everything, when we did the study with yourself and Adrian, we still found um, items or components that were not identified. So, I mean, I think that that's an exercise. And it is, a, it, it's, it's, I think it's, it's something that, that evolves all the time, yeah. you know. Yeah, and, Penny. And, and, and how dealing you with break that, your, your compound, what we hadn't done is perhaps broken everything down into the lowest level that we should have. And that we've now done, I think. I, I think for me, also dealing with, it's Charmaine, eh, your account. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, at, in one of the uh, meetings that we've had, she said, I promise you from now on, when I list something on an asset, I'll do a better description just in camera. Yeah. So, you know, so there was also some 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 um, some learning from from her side. So so just to confirm, we could do a component test. The component test that we do uh, follows best practices. Uh, one, the component must belong and must be a responsibility of the HOA, not council or the golf club or the developer. That's the first thing. Uh, we must determine a useful life. In other words, this thing will last ten years or twenty years or thirty years. And can we determine the remaining useful life? Um, best practice in America at the moment is uh, 20 years, and they've just updated it. The new best practice um, should be out, <clears throat> excuse me, anytime soon. They said to us end of May, they're working out 30 years out. Okay. Um, there was something on, on the components, and I think, Penny, you, you mentioned it, that. Um, even if you do a reserve study and you've got all your components, 
it's it's very important that um, there's a a still the operational budget that requires the maintenance of the item. So if something is maintained um, within the operational budget, we, we don't include it in the reserve study. So that's that's the first thing because you've got money in the bank. I use the example. Some estates can afford, for instance, to replace a computer once off. Other estates can't. So they have to build up capital to replace a, a laptop, uh, for instance. Some has got it in the operational budget. And the other thing is, <clears throat> If, even if an item is, is um, listed in the components list and part of the reserve study, very important, it still needs to be maintained. So there still needs to be money put aside because you, you want to prolong the, the life expectancy for, for as long as possible. So it, it doesn't mean because it's out of the, it's now out of the, let's call it the maintenance budget for maintenance and in the reserve study, you don't have to maintain it. I mean, you, you, you want to prolong it for as, as long as, as, as possible. I, I want to move on a little bit to some Sorry, myths. Just, yes, you're just, welcome. Just to continue with what you've said is, I mean, and, and, and let's use the, the cameras, for example. So we've got all our, our, our assets at component level in the reserve study, but each of those has a maintenance leg to it to, to make sure that you, you stretch the asset to the full lifespan of it and if you can extend it. So cameras, as an example, we have a full maintenance contract and agreement and we allow for money in the operational budget because we see that as being operational. So you need it there for the estate to continue. Our reserve is we see our reserve as being there for the replacement of the asset, not for the con you know the day-to-day -day maintenance and to make sure that it operates correctly. So we quite yeah. clearly split that. Yeah. And, um, and, 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 sorry. Um, yeah, and Adrian, every, go. every plan would be different and, and unique to the state. So yeah. um, at the end of the day, and it's also quite new, we're taking guidance from the USA. So maybe my personal opinion is that a reserve funding plan is basically a budget planning tool. So you get a list of things that needs to be done over the next 30 years. So I just want to touch on the 30 years as, again, um, sectional title, talk about a 10 year maintenance plan, American mm -hmm. 20 years. We like to do 30 years because it's long, but also some replacement values are more than 20 years and you might miss them totally. So, so the, the components that sometimes grow areas that can be included on a, the, 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 the call it a funding plan, which is not only allocated reserves, is obviously replacement values that we talked about. I guess you could include the maintenance items and the systems we are using are allowing for it to specify yeah. when each component should be maintained and to put exact amount to it, which will be future valued. Because the mm -hmm. benefit that you get from that, I suppose if you put an operational budget, you're back to some sort of a thumb suck again. And while if it's in the in the system, it, it gives, a, I believe, a better accurate um, estimate of the cost. And then also what's a nice value add is that it actually um, it gives a to-do list, you know. So you, every uh, month or year you get your list. This is what we need to do according to the plan. And then the last item I quickly want to touch on is then capital projects. So um, because it, it's a budget planning tool. So now you think, well, yes, we would love to build the swimming pool in 15 years. And you, and I, you can throw, the system allows you to throw it into the mix. And you get a nice idea about how would it influence the funding plan if that's right. So in my opinion, I think you can throw all three items into the two because it gives a nice um, a nice estimate and a nice to-do list. Okay, I, you're talking... I, you, yeah, go, Penny. Sorry. So, Adrian, you're talking to the, to, to the specific tool. We do have all our assets listed in, an, in, a, in a maintenance plan um, for, for asset maintenance. So if we need to do, so there's job cards created annually and we know how much it's going to cost us to maintain everything when they're maintenance. So it's a full maintenance schedule, which we've married back to that. So we've got two separate systems. That, so we know how to do our maintenance and then we've got our replacement. It was just that we already had that uh, maintenance plan in place and we've taken it quite far down the line. We looked at doing the replacement in there, but they didn't have an offering and hence we came to yours. Now we've got that integration between the two. So it's hand in glove. I think it, it's, a, it's a case of 
what you say is correct. You need to have the full picture. It's how you how you, how you set it up in your estate. I mean, our, our system creates job cards, the planned maintenance system. And, you know, the, and, and the guys close their job cards in there and everything. So oh, we can we can all come down to Cape Town and come and learn from you. Huh? Are you uh, will you will you fund us to come and uh, visit? We haven't got that type of money. <laughs> <laughs> you are, no, okay. don't know. I, 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 I just want to, uh, Adrian, I, I just want to, one myth that I also want to bust. Remember the component and what you can put in the reserve study is not limited to physical assets, pumps, roads, and things that you can touch. So, for instance, I'm using an example. If you want to do a fish count of your dams every five years, or you want to dredge your dams every five years, or you need to do a major landscaping upgrade of half a million rand every five years or seven years. It is an item that we can put in the reserve study for you. So you can build up the reserves that in five years time, you don't have to take out of a, a special levy or you suddenly, because what I found is suddenly you don't do something in year five because you need 200,000 rand to suddenly do a fish study of your dams. Because uh, it's a, it's almost like a once off. You can build it if it's in the day and it's in the reserve fund that in five years' time there's enough money to do your, um, say, and I'm using dredging the dam or the reserve or the, the, the fish study. So it's not necessarily a pump, a road, a brick, um, you know, or a camera or those kind of things. Okay. I, I want to, I want to, uh, Penny, uh, in terms of funding in Adrian and investments, what what's your experience in terms of can you do it longer term? You you did you find that with the reserve study you can now invest money over a longer period than just the standard seven days or thirty two days? And and how were you off in terms of money in the bank and your forecast in terms of what you require? Who's going first? <laughs> you can. <laughs> <laughs> and, and before you you kick mm -hmm. off, I just want to remind the, the participants, or the we 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 don't want to go later than quarter to uh, ten to. Okay, so we've got another let's say ten minutes. If there are questions, please pop it in the chat box for for an a. Um, you know, we will if you really uh, want to ask the question, you know, uh, reach out to an a and we can open your mic. And we can take the question, and uh, I'm sure we can answer it. If not, uh, we've got a webinar tonight, and me and Adrian will post that question to our friends in America. Okay, Penny, do you want to give it a go? Okay, so we keep a we keep liquid cash in the bank um, in in a current account, um, which and with them we have money in a money money market account, which we can get hold of quite easily. And then we've put money into um, an investment um, in bonds that is, well, I mean, you can get it at any time, but the idea is to leave it there for 12 months. Now, we know that that investment that we've put in to, uh, 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 with a broker, um, we are not going to need within the, in the next uh, 12 to 24 months unless we have a major um, incident and you know the likelihood of that happening is is not really there so I think that's what you've got to have a look at what do you need in the short term what do you need in the short to medium term you know for the next 12 months to um, to 18 months and then you know what can you invest that you're not going to be able that you don't need to touch it Yes, thanks, Penny. So, yeah, so Johan, I think the three main purposes, or some of the main purposes of this exercise is to determine the, the, the projects that need to be completed and maintained over the 30 years, then to determine what it's going to be, what it's going to cost, and then to, to determine now how we're going to fund this. Do we, first of all, we look at what we say percentage funded. So we look, look at, but, but most states do currently contribute some amount to, um, to reserve fund. Uh, there's a depreciation of financial statements, which hopefully is being paid over. There's maybe um, loans. There's there's many many 
contributing factors already that is going to these funds. And that's why I also do find in many instances that the states are overfunded. And, and then you can maybe say, well done, or give the member some money back. So after the, look, taking all these things into consideration, which is the expected cost over 30 years with time value, and then your current um, contributions or, or things in place to fund that, um, what's the current percentage funded? So, and then you, you find a shortfall. Then again, there's a discussion regards how do you fund that shortfall? You can borrow money, you, you can do things. Um, but the, the most common one is then to, to determine the, the reserve levy that the members needs to contribute. Um, and that's then allocated to, and that then gives a plan. Um, Again, this and this could quickly touch on you on your question how long you can invest funds. I think if you could do this exercise at the end of the 30 years and look back, you can get very accurate because you will see exactly when you needed what <laughs> money and you can invest it exactly for that amount of day. So I did say earlier as well, this remains a, a art as well. So you can go into the nth amount of planning and then something happens next year that you didn't plan. But with with actually Applying the science, which is there's a lot of, you can get a very good idea of what money you will be needing when, and that will then allow you to say, okay, but based on this plan, assuming we will be quite accurate, we can probably be quite safe to invest this money for five years or longer. So, so I think a long story short, again, it remains a guess, but it's extremely calculated guess, and knowledge is power, and I believe you can still make better decisions. And then if it doesn't work out as planned, I do believe you can really have a very good story to say that you applied your mind when you made this decision. I, I'm going to put both of you on the spot. Um, is it possible to do this in us? I, yes. I think it depends on your staffing levels and the um, capacity of the staff you have. I mean, collecting the data is one thing. But, you know, it's always, and, and we, we did it with, so in-house, I presume you, you, you include your community members that are prepared to add their wisdom uh, and uh, knowledge to this. And I think you can start the journey, but once you start going into automating it, then I think it's always best to have an outside perspective, just to come in and see almost like you say, an, 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 a check, so an audit of what you're doing and how you're doing, because the learnings are there. So if, you, if you've got the capacity, then yes, but I always think getting um, outside knowledge is uh, uh, always valuable. But I need to ask the question about in-source or outsource. When you outsource, you've still got to remember that the accountability and the ownership is still in-house. You can't outsource that. Yeah. You can outsource somebody doing it for you, but then you need to be clear that you're managing it and knowing and know what's going on in there because otherwise you can get yourself into trouble. Very, very true. You want, if I can add to that, um... I mentioned earlier, we believe there's a services and then a system component to it. We've, so of course, anything can be done by anyone. We, we, we've learned that, um, and the America call them reserve study specialists. It is, it's a more difficult process. You want us actually more clever than what it looked, you won't believe me. So, so it's <laughs> actually, um, it is a specialist field. It's not impossible. Um, so, so first of all, I would say the questions if you ask, is there the required specialities or, or expertise in house to do that and then maybe yes maybe you've got a, a very clever chartered accountant on your board I, we found a risk with that is then continuity as well you know so it's one thing if, if someone does you a favor in the, on the board or or even a state manager built this monster spreadsheet what happens next year so is the speciality there what about continuity and then also just time you know it, it, it's a it is a process that takes a lot of time um to, to get all the components together so so, so it's a challenge and we, to be honest, we haven't seen it being really successful except maybe at Beacon with to, to be done in house. So, so that's why, again, to be honest, Rihanna and myself saw then uh, maybe an opportunity or a gap to offer the service with the, offer the professional service. And again, I used the audit example. Of course, I try, well, it's not legal, but I could audit their own, do their own audit, auditing function, but it's probably better to leave it to the, to the accounting firms. 
Yeah, so I just need to go on to what Adrian said. I mean, we actually set up a spreadsheet to do ours originally. And if you're looking at setting it up in a spreadsheet, you, you're on a hiding to nothing. We did it like that for almost five years and to keep it up to date and be able, I mean, that, that was my biggest concern is, you know, have you been able to keep it up to date? Have you taken assets that you've retired off there? Have you put all the new assets back on? Have you got all the right information? And it's very difficult to keep that information up to date in a spreadsheet. You need to have something more formalized. And also, you know, that's where we came to you guys and then got that outsourced. So I don't know whether um, maybe my interpretation of outsourcing was different to Ooh. yours. Um, you know, I'm, I'm saying you, you could do it in a spreadsheet, but you're never going to get it 100%. And five years down, first two years, you'll probably be accurate. And then, you know, down the line, you'll be arguing and people will be checking your spreadsheets and have you done this and have you done that? And who did those formulas? And that's where it, where you're looking for an application that can automate it. And hand in hand with that, you've got outsiders giving you the wisdom. So... But it, it also links a little bit to, because I often get the question, how often should you do it? You know, and if I look at best practices, they, they've got uh, different uh, levels. So they talk about a full reserve study, uh, including a site visit. Then they talk about the reserve study without the site visit, uh, update, or just, you know, like a desktop and those kind of things. So, so what I've experienced over the last few years is, is that where we now as a, in the season or in the life cycle of estates, it's probably best to, to, in the beginning to spend the time and energy to do a full on-site reserve study uh, or uh, analysis, spend the time, the energy and the money and make sure you've got all the information. I, I, I would guess, because we haven't been to cycle two yet, but it's probably better to do it the same thing year two and maybe year three, just because it's new in South Africa. And yes, you miss things out and you learn as you go along. But thereafter, you can probably best practice it every key to five years. But what they found is, is, is those guys who religious guys, estates in America, and I don't have the stats in front of me, Adrian, maybe go look it up. Um, but um, those who do full reserve studies, um, you know, with a, with a site visit, in terms of the percentage of um, special levies, they far below than the guys who don't do it. So you almost, you know that you're not gonna do special levies. And uh, you can see over a period of time, you also get a percentage better funded uh, because not everybody is 100% uh, funded. To answer that question about what, what happens if you can extend it, uh, we, we just move the date. Yes, it's got an impact on, on your fund uh, required, but remember we take a 30 year view. In, in year 10, you might have 9 million rent in the bank, you're gonna use 2 million. In year 12, you might have 6 million rent in the bank and you're gonna use zero or a lesser amount, um, just to use example. So it's not a short term, it's not about tomorrow, it's about 30 years and a, over a period of, of time. Any questions, any closing remarks? Anybody wants to make a comment? Anybody on the, on the chat who wants to, or on the, on the panel, or not the panel, the participants, who's got something specific. Uh, even uh, we'll take suggestions of topics for future uh, community conversations. Um, and before we close, I may, I just wanna talk about the ZA220 course that we, that's currently in development that I wanna share with the participants, okay. Uh, perfect, Joanna, just, there's just a comment from Kita um, that you can just go check out. Did, it, did, it, did I not answer that one about the routine maintenance? I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I think I've answered it. Okay. She, she can send me a, a direct message if she's not happy with my, with my answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so to, um, be, before I close and thank Adrian and, and Penny, uh, if you've got specific topics, that's now for the participants that you would like us to discuss, uh, send us an email. What's up me and we, we look at it. Um, 
it's it's around the corner. So normally what we do in August, we celebrate um, Women's Month with a webinar or um, community conversation with a female host, female panel. We get uh, our friends in America to participate and share, you know, and celebrate uh, Women's Month and uh, females in, in the industry. We even use service providers. Last year, I think there was one or two ladies and service providers in the industry. But what we want to do this year as well is somewhere in August is what we call the ZA220. It's a, a, a variation of the 300 courses offered by um, America. And it's going to be around um, office administrators. So we really want to get the females that sit in front the receptionists, the administrators in a room for a day and provide tools and added value uh, so that when you leave there that you felt that you spend a quality day together uh, and learn something about the industry and um, you know be better at your job. Anything else? Yo, Mota, you can unmute yourself as well if you rather ask the question. Um, I've made the settings that you can unmute yourself. Someone wants to unmute. Sorry, just to take on, you, you asked the question about how often do you need to do a reserve study. To do a full reserve study, I would agree with you every two to three. But it is a continuous process as you have reserves, new reserves, you need to make sure they're there and you do. And I think you need to run those programs every sort of six months and specifically around your budgeting time yeah. to make sure that you've got the right reserves and the right replacement dates because you might change those. So it is a continuous process. I, I agree, uh, Penny. You need to once a year roll that program over at take out, uh, update, you know, things change over a year. Uh, the one estate that I'm involved with, as an example, uh, we managed to keep the levies the same for the last five years because there's new stands coming online. So, you know, we, we grow the business with additional revenue uh, through additional uh, stands. So uh, you, you have to update it annually. So you get extra income from here or there, or things change, or you written off assets or those kind of things. So I, I definitely uh, once a year in that uh, budget uh, season uh, to look at it. Penny, thank you very much for your time. Huh? Um, really, really, really appreciate it. Um, and uh, now, now that you're the outgoing chairman of, of, of Schoenenberg, uh, good luck for your, for your next season in your life. Um, enjoy the travels. You know, from time to time. And then to Adrian, Adrian Dante Fiote, thank you very much. Um, I don't see any other questions. Um, unless somebody has got a specific closing remark, then um, we can close the session. And thank you for everybody who made the effort and the time to participate and to attend. And looking forward to see you at the next uh, webinar. We uh, advertise it on our Facebook page. Don't forget to go there. There's, there's also a recording. Of the session, it will be posted on our website and on our YouTube channel. And uh, see you in class. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Great day to you. Thank you, Totsins. Bye.